All right. Well, hey everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Today is day six of my free seven day series, Dinner with Chef AJ, where every day I make four or five recipes from my new book, the 10th anniversary edition of Unprocessed. And I want to thank you for supporting me, those who have bought the book or those who will buy the book in general, but specifically if you buy it on or before Sunday, April 3rd at midnight Pacific time in the year 2022, I'd love to send you almost $100 worth of bonuses to thank you simply by emailing your receipt to chefajbonus at yahoo.com or a screenshot of your receipt and we'll send you the videos of three exclusive cooking classes. They're each two hours with PDFs of the recipes of classes that I actually sell for $25 a piece and the audio files of the book, which will soon be on Audible, but you'll get them for free. So thank you so much. And I'd like to introduce my co-host for the evening. You're going to have to unmute yourself in the kitchen, Charles. You're muted because I have... The funniest, I, I, I mean, you could say a lot about this guy, but I think everyone would agree he is the funniest man in Indio. Charles, I need you to please unmute because he's muted. Charles, is there no yes. Charles? All right, there we go. The funniest man in Indio, Steve Millman. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Look at this. We're back. It's Deja Jew. Hey, how are you? Nice to see you. We're Welcome back. I get another cooking lesson with everybody at home. And here's AJ to take it away and we'll just play along. And oh my uh, God, I feel so short next to you. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I'm, I'm feeling like, very tall. You know, the thing very is, is he, he, you wouldn't believe this, but he has a very tiny torso. It's all in his legs. <laughs> his nickname is actually Tiny Torso. That was your nickname. Now, I want you to know yeah. that Steve actually took the peel off this. He did this, a beautiful this, job. Thank you very much. And, um, and I'll cut it if you want. No, no, not, we don't want to cut it because we want to show Oh, them. I see. You want to so immerse this, it. This is the coolest thing. So could you please redirect the camera? So this recipe is called Nutrient-Rich Black Bean Soup. I don't know if you're able to shoot this pressure cooker here. So I have this recipe for nutrient-rich black bean soup, and it's delicious. But here's the thing. It makes 32 cups of soup, which is a lot of soup. Thank God. But that's good for batch cooking and stuff. We but, love our beans. Yeah, absolutely. But the thing is, uh, Steve, is uh, this, this recipe took about a half hour to cook on the stove, which isn't horrible, but people wanted to know how to make it pressure cooker. So I'm going to show you how to do that. But to do that, you actually have to cut the recipe in half. And you're going to probably need an eight quart pressure cooker because it's hard to jam we everything. We were so happy six. we got an eight quart. Yeah, because you know, you can do small jobs in a big, but not big jobs in a small. And what I love about this style of cooking is just I throw everything in. And then we juice it up with a immersion blender later. So we don't have to cut stuff up. So this onion that Steve cut, the peel off, yeah, go ahead, just put it in. Look at that, look at that. Look at that. Whoa. See how easy it is to cook? You just put it in. Okay. These sweet potatoes, here, watch. He's gonna oh make God, the oh soup. God, look at that. Hey, everybody, look at me, I'm a cook. <laughs> You just put them in. And okay. since these are organic sweet potatoes, we don't want to peel them. There's fiber and nutrients yeah, in the skin. That's right. All right. We got a bag I of love this. I love this. Ladies and gentlemen, look at this. See, you don't need to be yeah. a culinary school graduate. To no, no, no. Food. Yeah. We got a pound of fire roasted corn. You just corn. have to like to eat. GMO free. This is such an easy way oh to make God. food. Yeah. You don't have to cut anything Whoops, sorry. Out. I blocked you no a little worries. bit. Don't worry. You know, Trader Joe's is known for having the GMO free stuff. Everything at Trader Joe's GMO free. These are organic yeah. criminy mushrooms. Yeah, just I put love them. them. In. Love and what's them. really cool about this recipe is it's got like, I mean, I don't know, like almost 10 pounds of vegetables. So if you want to use beans from scratch, Every can of beans is about one and a half cups of cooked beans, but we're going to use salt-free beans. Steve, if that. you don't mind, just put them Pour all in. And even with all the water, it doesn't matter, right? Yeah, that's the bean water. The bean water oh, has some it. flavor in it, so we want to include it. Let me you, you know how you have your uh, your veggie broth? Yeah. Your uh, pot liquor? Yep. Do people drink uh, bean liquor? 
Is there such a well, thing? actually, it is, and it's called aquafaba. And when they're oh doing God. it from beans like garbanzo beans, where it's clear, they actually use it to make meringue. Wasn't that like a, a men's a men's uh, aquafaba? Uh, aquafaba. Figure aquafaba. Figure aqua velvet, right? <laughs> Sun dried tomatoes, the secret okay. weapon from salt free cooking. Oh my God! There you go. Sure. Sun-dried tomatoes are the best. Yeah, because oh the thing God. about sun-dried tomatoes, guys, is especially if you're trying to get rid of salt or eat less salt, it's not that they're salty, but this three-ounce bag of sun-dried tomatoes was made from four pounds of tomatoes, so it's very concentrated. And the only other thing we're going to put in is our seasonings. If you know anything about me, my seasonings are always measured in advance. Yeah. You can kind of see why this isn't going to work in a smaller pressure cooker. And so all we're going to do is put the top on it'll run on the clock and then we're going to push the pressure cook button and we're going to put it on to gosh i don't even remember how many minutes look i'm going to better look in the book let's just say i'll, I'll do 10 but it might have been less i'll double check the recipe in a second and that's that let me oh go check the recipe it's been a while since i've made this this was a big hit in my cooking classes i With used to make it best. every week and it's called nutrient rich because it's basically a lot of hidden vegetables in there. But once it's blended, all you think of is that it is so a black good. bean soup. Oh, forgot my garlic. I'm going to go grab that. And let's see. Yeah, you can come on. To Someone wants to know if they have to cut the recipe in half, even though it's an eight quart. Well, I don't know. Then you'd have to cut it in a fourth. I don't really recommend cutting recipes in fourths. I cut the original recipe in half to fit in the eight quart. What you could do is if you had a six quart, is just leave one ingredient out, maybe the frozen corn, stir that back in. But they can't do the whole thing in the eight quart. Oh, oh no, it would oh, never yeah. fit. It would never fit. Do I not tell you how to do this in the pressure cooker? You got to start reading my book. This makes a recipe yeah. you cut in half and made in the Instant Pot. Guess what? I didn't give a time for this. No, to publish it. One of the things we're going to add, we love to serve soups like this, or you know, with squeeze, with, with squeeze a lime on top, or you can just stir in a half a cup of lime after it's done. 10 minutes is probably more than enough. Five maybe could have been enough. But what's really great, Steve and everyone, as a topping for this soup is pico de gallo. And I learned that from Chef Eric Le Chasseur. And uh, do you remember him from Seed Cafe and Seed Kitchen? Really easy to make your own. And so when I'm making my own salsa, I look for the firmest. But, you know, we can do this together so that yeah. it take less time. Let me get you a knife. We have another cutting And I could just oh, cut actually, this you out, could, right? You could, you could work on that for me. This will take about this. 25 minutes to do this. Yeah. <laughs> Here, you can work on that. Okay. And so when Eric Le Chasseur was on my show, he made pico de gallo as a topping for my black bean soup. Eight minutes. Eight minutes. Yeah. Yay. But we got to remember to tell the publisher. So eight minutes. I did 10. It'll be fine. And they can yeah. make a change now and in the book, huh? Well, I don't think it make a change right now. But yeah. So what I'm going to do is uh, when I know I'm going to make salsa, we actually, they sell like the salty pico de gallo that's delicious at Winco and I get lazy and I buy it. It's basically the same recipe. It's onion or in our case, we're using shallot, tomato, jalapeno, cilantro, that's it. But I'm gonna add a little lime to mine. So when I know really I'm gonna good. make this, yeah. I, I get the firmest ones I can find. So I, you might wanna just lower that. And I just, I, I like Romas because they're not just all liquidy. Like, you know how some tomatoes are really liquidy? Um, for salsa, I don't want them so liquidy. I want them a little bit firmer. And it doesn't really matter how big you cut them. I just think you should cut them kind of all the same size. And if you wanted to squeeze out the liquid and get rid of the seed pocket, you know, you could. There's nothing wrong with doing that. But at Rancho La Puerta, they cut the tomatoes so small. How do you want to cook this? Do, do you know how to dice it really fine, or would you rather work on tomato? Uh, I'll, I'll work on the tomato. Okay, let's switch. Okay, here we go. Yep, here we go. And, and then you're just going to throw it in the bowl. Mm -hmm. And a, a lot of times I'll use a tool like the uh, Vidalia Chop Wizard. Wizard. Yeah, that's what it's called. Not lizard, wizard. So basically a shallot is a cross between an onion and garlic. And I like to use that in my salsas, ma mainly as opposed to just using a uh, as, as an onion. But an onion would be fine, onion and garlic. You know, salsa literally just means sauce. There really is no recipe to salsas. I mean, there is what you say it is. But just whatever you like. Oh, my eyes are already tearing. Hmm. 
But salsa is just such, it's so good on things, you know? The immersion blenders, like your big friend, if, you, if you're tearing up from this. Oh my God. But you know what? It's um, we, When we make our uh, cauliflower bisque, which is one of our favorite soups, we always have some on hand or in I the didn't freezer. I know that. Yeah, we, we always, <laughs> no, but we always, we love to put salsa. We like to put greens on our soup, like handfuls of arugula, and then put uh, some, some, some pico de gallo on it. So I prefer pico de gallo to like, you know, the salsa that comes in a jar. You know what I mean? Like, like the, uh, I don't know what it's well, called. I, actually, Picante I now feel, sauce. this is a strong onion because I feel it. I never yeah, no, feel this it. Is a, this is a strong shallot. Shallot is a, is an onion and garlic cross. And again, I'm not the best at chopping things fine. I'm not the best at chopping things at all because I just am the lazy practical chef that buys salsa. Here we go. I can put it right in, huh? Yeah, you can put it right in. Look at this. Look at this shot. Look at that. Look at that. Whoa. And I showed you the other night on the show when I was making the enchiladas. You know what? Worst case scenario, use a can of salt-free tomatoes. Fire roasted or not fire roasted, it is fine. So I'm just going to put this in. So we need a few more tomatoes. We can, I'll have you work on them and yeah, uh, I'm going to get the jalapeno. Actually, and the cilantro too. Those of you that saw the show Friday know that I got this wonderful gift from Hans Steel. These are herb scissors. And so I've got my cilantro here and I can just kind of cut it up a little bit smaller with these wonderful scissors. And honestly, I really don't measure. I always measure when I bake or when I make desserts, but I rarely, rarely measure when I cook. The exception would be like spicy things like chipotle or cayenne. Of course, I'm not gonna just throw that in really, really. These scissors yeah. are a godsend. Thank you, Dr. Dino. Speaking, really. yes. Speaking of desserts, we've been in loving the brawnies. Oh, nice. Well, we're gonna oh, make yeah. a similar uh, one tonight, but an apple pie flavored brawnie, uh, apple pie hearts, but I couldn't find my heart mold. So it's gonna be apple pie squares. We used to make this in my cooking class uh, for about 10 years. I taught a monthly three hour cooking class called healthy made delicious in my apartment in Sherman Oaks and people just love this soup. So there's my cilantro and I can always choose to add more. I'll decide if I want to do that after we get it mixed in. It's always good to cook with a buddy, isn't it? Do you That's ever fun. cook with Linda at home? Well, I do, but she really likes to take over the kitchen and uh... <laughs> yeah, I mean, we do sometimes. It was, it's fun. Um, it's fun. Guess what? Nothing, because Shada didn't have any. Oh. But if Shada did have some, I would have added, I would have started with two tablespoons and then maybe added two more. Yeah. So it worked even without it, but I was thinking of maybe having it even be thicker. So I would have started with two tablespoons or an eighth of a cup and see how the thickening was and then gone up to about a quarter cup. I'm going to actually remake that this week for Charles because he liked it so much and then I can let you know exactly but it just showed you it worked even without it we and said we have to make that we have to make it oh yeah i'll, yeah. I'll make it this week and a psyllium husk also works you know because um chia seeds weren't always part of our diet or at least i never knew about them and so i was using uh, psyllium husk which is basically what metamucil is for that so this is a very good condiment by the way and you know we could probably stop at this this number of tomatoes but we must have our jalapeno in you have here. a specific type of tomato you like to use i like the roma I do. roma okay remember tony roma yeah tony roma is it happened I, be, I became vegan you know so like 45 years ago so i never got to try you know that bloom and onion thing they always talk about yeah i never got to try that so there we go and jalapeno i can add these though right oh yeah please add those and we might stop at that i showed you this the other night if you don't like it hot you want to avoid the seed pocket and just use oh, the green no. part the toughest yeah a little oh, seed man. is probably okay but a lot of seed you're going to have a lot of heat so i'm doing my yeah. best to avoid the seed pocket don't touch your eyes or any other mucous membranes uh, when you're working with this, probably best to use gloves or wash your hands right afterwards. Actually, can I have that knife? It's a little easier. You could yeah. just pick the whole thing up and pour it in. Oh, yeah, I will. And then our jalapeno. Very easy to make. And this is going to go on top of the soup. It's a wonderful garnish. And we could also eat it with the chips we showed you the other night. And, of course, what is that without lime juice, right? This is going to be very, very tomato-centric. Well, yeah, because it should be, but now it's got to have some of this in it. But stir it. Do you think it needs any more cilantro? 
Oh yeah, why not? All right, well, let's get the lime juice in first. Look at this. Yep. Okay, I'll let you do this. Pico de Midi, Pico de Midi, Midi's mash work. Pico de Midi, no. Do you know how to use this little thing? Uh, yeah. Okay, so why don't we start go. with, uh, I think two limes will be enough. And we'll save these tomatoes for a salad. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, the miracle of squeezing. I'm going to add just a little bit more cilantro. If you hate cilantro, you know what else is good is parsley. Italian parsley, though, often rather than curly parsley. Is it parsley. similar? It's similar, but not, not exactly the same. But if they want a little bit of a green herb in there. But these herb scissors, they rock, man. They get it nice and small and just so you don't have a big leaf in every okay. bite. Okay. That's what I just do it by looks. You know, like, does it look like it has enough? That actually, you know what? That's probably enough. That's enough lime juice. Let's save this okay. for the soup. Oh, okay. no, do, do one more, but we'll save this for the soup. Okay. And we'll cut this, and everybody has a little wedge to squeeze on top. And you know what? We can always taste and adjust, right? This is my workout for today, squeezing this lime. I know. It's a lot of work, isn't it? <laughs> got All it right. strong. So we got two recipes and two more to go. So we're going to make Sorry, a salad dressing. Uh -oh. So tomorrow on the 11 o'clock show, we have Dr. Nikki Davis, and she's going to be doing a uh, a throwdown for all the vegan ranch salad dressings on YouTube. She might even be making mine, but I'm going to make my Southwestern ranch, which is really good. Mm. And one of the ways that I get things to be really rich and creamy without using nuts, and even without using beans, which are very healthy, but still higher in caloric density, then the magic of cauliflower. This cauliflower is steamed, so it's nice and soft. It's been chilled. This is my Pampered Chef microwave steamer. I just steamed it in the microwave for six minutes. This looks beautiful, by the way. And this was so easy to make, you know? Yeah, I love it. So we'll save that for a little bit. Yeah. And then to that, I'm going to add my water, lime juice, and my dates that have been soaking so they're nice and soft, and all of my seasonings. And so this is a Southwestern ranch. It kind of tastes like French dressing a little bit. A little bit spicier. Oh my god! I just want to get those. Can I taste it? Well, you don't want to taste just spices. <laughs> no, you no, good. Taste you it. can't taste just the. Oh my god! No, it smelled great. It, it smelled great. Chipotle in there. You don't want to just taste that and just yeah. taste the chipotle because oh. that probably wouldn't be yeah. good. So now, oh, this smells amazing. Smoked yeah. paprika is the bomb. <laughs> And that's, seconds. and that's how I met her. Yeah, and you know what's great is yeah. with the um with the cauliflower, it provides enough body and thickness so we not we're not gonna have to add any chia seeds or anything like that. And I love these little salad dressing containers I got from Tupperware, or yeah. I actually just reuse the body. So short here, is this you know coming that? over to our place? Well, if we not? have a salad, yeah, we're gonna go watch the have... Oscars with Steve and Linda tonight. Look at that, perfect, it fits right in there. That is beautiful. I think we dressing. have a question, yes, we want to make the herb scissors again. Yeah, so I think we actually saved the box because um, this is great because this was a present the other night for Dr. Von Steele, and you get these on it Amazon, say it. but look right here. And you know what? These are in my Amazon store now. So if you go to amazon.com slash shop slash chef AJ, and they come with a little guard and a way to clean them. Very nice. So this is a delicious dressing, low in fat, and it's so yummy. It's well, do you have salad? Okay, then I have salad. No, don't need salad. It's not, it's not hard. All right. We got, we got a lot of greens. Well, I can give you some of it, but I'll, I'll yeah. put it away. See, if someone wants to know if you write a movie with Mel Brooks. Uh, no, but I've met him a few times. Great guy. And I'm just, I'm reading his, I'm reading, I'm listening to his audible autobiography. And it's a lot of fun. He's still alive, isn't oh, he? Oh, yeah, Brooks? he's 95 years old. Remember, I know everybody's, everybody's age. He's 95 and... Uh, I met him a few times. He was a delightful guy. Very, very sweet guy. 
All right, we've got one more recipe. We're gonna make the apple pie hearts, but for some reason, for the life of me, I cannot find my heart loads. And I wonder if I lent them to somebody because I'm just gonna use the ones we used for the brownies. Same idea, silicone. And so Steve is already an expert. Uh -oh. That's why I had you back. Yeah, You're just familiar to with put, fill that up. Right, with so what we're gonna do in this recipe, it calls for almonds, pecans, and walnuts. But instead, we're going to use oats. Isn't that clever of me? I say it is. It's, I'll do it as long as the Bellis doesn't get any. That's all I'm saying. That's the so running I'm still going to use my cinnamon. Out of my favorite cinnamon from local spicery, Nick, if you're watching. So do you do and just, just a tiny bit of nutmeg? Based on look, you go, hey, I've this done feels this right. Five years working in a restaurant making desserts. I just know. I just know. So I'm just going to zhuzh this a little bit before I add my dates and right. my apple. I love these so much. Sound like that. I think it's time for a Breville or a new food processor. That did not sound good. Is it supposed to sound like that? Yeah, uh, I don't know. You're asking me. You're asking me. Oh no, my God. This did not sound very good. I think it's time for a Breville. So I'm going to add my dates and my dried apple rings. And you know, two handfuls. Well, it's cups, but I, I you know, I, I you, you generally have a, have a good I'm idea. I'm a professional. What can I tell you? Yeah. Oh, I forgot my vanilla powder. I'm going to have one of these. Dry fruit, high color density. Uh oh. Be careful. My vanilla That's true. powder. There we go. This is the brand I'm now using just because it's what I found on Amazon. It was inexpensive and highly rated. All right, let's hope. Oh my God, is that good? Steve, no, no. I forgot to add this to the soup. Could you open this with the scissors? We've got to put the garlic in the food processor. Yeah. Just open it with the scissors. We'll open the top real quick while I get while I free. Which way is the scissors? All right, and, let's see how we're doing. And it was yeah. amazing. Okay, so we okay. need we need a few more dates for stickiness. This oh, isn't sticky. There we go. Oh, yeah, questions. Someone's asking. Three more use, dates? Just a handful. If you use an equal amount of oats and nut and nuts. Yes, oats, you sub, you're basically okay. you're substituting the oats for the nuts one to one. And also, can you use peaches instead of apples? Well, you could, but it would probably be peach pie squares instead of apples. Oh but I forgot, sorry about this, but it's this is life. We've got to let it run. <laughs> Always like to transfer to a prettier dish. Oh, now we're getting somewhere. So what we want to do is we want to be able to squeeze it together so that it has a nice break point. 
but honestly, it needs, I mean, it smells great, but it needs to go another minute. It's pretty though. Well. All right, well, I know this is probably very boring for you to watch a food processor, so we are going to do this together. But why don't we start with the same one first? I hope the soup finishes in time because I want you guys out by Oscar. So these are called apple pie hearts because I had heart molds. You could just roll them in a ball, but I really do like to press them into this little thing because I'm going to taste know, this. Just... Is that okay? All right, how is it? <laughs> it's good. Okay. Very good. So we just kind of press it like this. Does it taste like apple pie? It tastes very good. It, it tastes a bit like your pie that you make. Right, that's lot. what the yeah. idea is, to ha kind of have like a reminiscent of apple pie without yeah. having to go bake an apple pie. Yeah. So yeah, you can put a little bit. killer there. crust. Yeah, so yeah, that's pretty good, pretty good. Yeah. So when you do the oats, they don't, the oats never get as finely ground as the nuts, unless I were to use a better food processor like the Nutramilk or use oat flour, but that's okay because I like the way it looks and I don't mind that it's not finely ground into a flour. How do you, what do you think of the Nutramilk versus uh, Cuisinart? Oh, well, I think the Nutramilk is more powerful. I do, or yeah. maybe it could be that this Cuisinart is old, but I, I get better customer service from Nutramilk than I do oh, from Cuisinart. Okay. Cuisinart and Rebel like never it says a lot. to me, but it, Cuisinart's a good yeah. product. But I, I hear a lot of good things about the Breville uh, sous chef that we used yesterday at Shada's house. Should I take this off? Can I take this off? Safer? Be safe? It's fine. It's fine. I sure hope it comes up to pressure, but basically if, you know, if the soup doesn't come up to pressure in time, what uh, basically all I do is take the immersion blender, blend it, and then add my lime juice to it, or just give people lime on the side. Either way, it's fine. And with the black bean soup, you can do a couple of different things. You can, um, what you can do is sometimes people like to leave a little texture. So they'll leave a little bit of corn and a little bit of bean behind, and then they can, uh, I'm just gonna take a little bit yeah, off of yours. You yeah, it, it, and they keep it off the top. And uh, you know, that provides a little bit of stir back. And of course you can garnish with cilantro, but I like to garnish it with the pico de gallo. So these are absolutely ready to eat now. You just pop them out and you have a little bite-sized treat that's reminiscent of apple pie. I just like everything cold. So I'm gonna stick these in the freezer and Oh, they're really good. Yeah, we're basically done. I mean, we're they, just waiting on the soup now. They get like a very, it's not like it's too hard of a texture on the freezer. The, yeah. the brownies. Yeah. It's just right. All right. So how long to get to that point in the freezer? How many minutes? I don't know. I'd say, hour? Yeah, I'd say, I was going to say an hour, but that's fine. Okay, so it looks like it, the little seal just made. So it could be eight minutes from now. So I got nothing else really to show you. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Um, well, and then I can show you the finish on the soup. Uh, a silly question. Since we have the black beans, what is? do you ever take measures to uh, cut the, uh, the gas aspect of... Uh, yeah, I don't eat them. And then I have no, absolutely no I know, no but for everybody food. else on the planet. Yeah, so, so a couple of things you can do. Yeah. If, you know, I don't know really what to do about canned beans to do that. But what Mary McDougall said is she has a method. And if you just listen to the last broadcast I did with her, she describes her method for degassing the beans. And it's, it's, it's something about putting them on a tray a and soaking them. secret years of marriage. Well, no, she, she has a really great foolproof method that really works for beans that she talks about. Also sprouting them can help. And what I've heard from macrobiotic chefs like Eric and Sinai, that if you take a piece of kombu, which is a sea vegetable about the size of your thumb, yeah. when you cook them, that also helps with digestibility. Someone wants to know what this label is. Oh, yeah. So, I'm, you know what, guys, these are great. This is from Whole Food Plant Based uh, um, Dallas, and it was a wonderful uh, holiday gift for them. And they sell these magnets that go on the side, which basically tell you the cooking time of every single grain and bean. And then on the other side, yeah, these are pretty cool. So I'll put, I'll, I, it won't happen immediately, but I'll put the link to it in the show notes. But these are magnets for your Instant Pot. So they're really quite nice if you don't want to have to like dirty a book, looking everything up or touching your screen. So 
We just have to now wait for this. Let me share what the immersion blender looks like. And so one thing about Instant Pot is they, they reinvent themselves so many times. It's like, oh, they just got used to this one and now they got yeah. another one with so many different. And they have them with the air fryer capability. Are you DVRing yeah. the Academy Awards in case oh, yeah. we're late? Oh, oh yeah, good. Yeah, so yeah, we, we can are. be a little bit late. Linda's got the whole day. It's actually faster when you do it that way. You can fast forward the commercials and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, we like that. So you know what they say, a watched pot never boils and certainly a watched pressure cooker never boils. So I did those, I whizzed through those three recipes. It's a lot harder to do the immersion without plugging this in. And it's a lot harder before the stuff gets cooked, oh, that's yeah. for sure. So I appreciate you guys uh, joining me for my special series. Tomorrow's the last day and tomorrow oh. we're making peanut noodles, spicy oh, peanut noodles. Oh, my favorite noodles. thing in life. Well, you can come back and have it. And, oh my uh, God. What else are we making? We're making chocolate peanut butter ice cream and uh, I don't know what else am I making? It was, it's a Thai dish. The peanut oh, butter. It just beeps, so it's going to be eight minutes or ten minutes. Uh, someone wants to know if you can substitute fresh apple for the dry. No, I'm sorry, you can't. I mean, if you were going to bake this, you would, but you need you need it to be dry in order for it to stick together. But if you were going to like bake it like a you know, like a bar, absolutely, but not for not for this type of recipe. And then the other thing is, do you make any kind of a yellow cake? Hmm, do I make a yellow cake? Let me think. I, I like love angel, yellow cake. Angel you know, like cake? golden cake yeah, yeah. or a white cake. That was my favorite coconut cake. I do not think I do. I make a lemon meringue pie, I make a banana cream pie, I make a chocolate cake, a carrot cake. I do not think I do because how am I going to? I mean, I, the only thing I can think of is if I did something with like a ham and yam, but it's really hard when you don't use flour to make a cake in general. So I don't know, but I bet you, if you if you don't mind that it has flour and sugar and oil, I know there's got to be recipes for vegan golden cake. Yeah. But I still love yellow cake, especially white cake more than yellow cake. So we're just waiting on this. And this was really when I would uh, do this in my cooking class in, in my home in Sherman Oaks. I had uh, like a burner that I could use in my living room because the class was in the living room. The kitchen was way too small. We'd have 24 people all around in an L-shaped uh, sofa situation. And they were just, they couldn't believe it because this was double the recipe. So I was throwing in like two huge pounds of like char or kale, like, like not even tearing it up and putting it in and throwing in golf ball size onions and uh, two pounds of you know big sweet potatoes and so hungry. Like, you're not cutting this up and i'm yeah, like nope <laughs> and in 30 minutes so you know because somebody asked me today earlier in my class well i don't have an instant pot and i don't want to get one can i do your recipes on the stove in a slow cooker sure you can but realize in a slow cooker this is going to take eight hours on purpose whenever we ever eat over here which is well, we'll average once a week i hardly i you go boy he eats a lot but i hardly ever eat i told you hardly ever eat lunch I'm so hungry looking at looking at everything you here. Know, you know, um, you are going to so get a bill at the end of the year for every single week. You know, just sort of like it's I got good. like it's it's yeah. like becomes a buffet for me. Yeah, yeah. But it's all so low so calorie good. density. Yeah, you know, it's all great. Well, you know, I mentioned this on uh, when Wednesday, I guess it was. It, it, I the perfect example of we talked about it a drop, but. Staying below the five six hundred yeah, five, mark, yeah, and, and and my weight really doesn't change. I mean, three pounds up and down, and it's been that way for you know since we moved here. So that says an awful lot. So the secret yeah. to weight loss is moving to India. <laughs> that's right. It worked for well, Charles, and he uh, wasn't yeah. even trying. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's for sure. Wait, Charles, you you didn't lose weight since you moved here. I, I won't say no. You're getting a, a no there, but I'm telling you, I I lost weight. Um, COVID helped. Not not saying COVID was a good thing, but uh, not going to restaurants, not having the oil, the salt, sugar for sure. I wasn't having, and uh, it's just an amazing thing that if you eliminate these things uh, and you stay uh, stay in the six hundred or less calories, uh, it just Calor not, not, wait, not calories per day, no, no, calories per pound. Per pound, that's right. I'm, I'm saying that's right to you. Of course, you're no. Yeah. yeah so, um, yeah. So, how much weight did you lose going plant based SOS free? Um, not a lot. I mean, I'd lost uh, the most I ever weighed was about 225, 230 pounds. I'm one about 180 ish now, 180 to 182. I didn't weigh myself recently up until you know, a number of days ago. So yeah, I've lost like 50 pounds. Well, that's not nothing. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. That's I, a lot. But when you're tall, it, it 
one thing, my weight would fluctuate over the years and people would, nobody would ever say any, I always, you always fake it when I'm, I was lanky anyway. Uh, you, people don't know when you're six, four, they don't read it on you the same, but I, you know, inside and you know, like, Oh my God, I'm going through this wacky fluctuation again. And uh, it, it's not fun. Uh, it's great. It's so enlightening to not have to think about this, to be maintaining. When I mean, did you first get exposed to the idea of a plant-based diet? I think in the 80s, somewhere in, in the 1980s. Who, who, John Robbins, who'd you hear? Um, well, yeah, I probably did hear about him because I heard about his you know, book. Uh, and and uh, where did, I, I think McDougal, the first person, really, and probably a lot of people, uh, I, I saw him, went to see him live. You saw McDougal live? Yeah, I think in the 80s. Late eighties. Uh, 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 we're good. Better? Yeah, I think it was in the late eighties. I saw him at a hotel and yeah, somewhere. That's amazing. I Anaheim maybe or that's yeah crazy. yeah it was crazy it was great yeah and I was into uh, Jack Lane but he used to have like eggs didn't he? Well, I don't like think that? he was Egg vegan. Like, he really did a lot for. Oh, he did. He was yeah. great. Loved him. He said, it, Loved him. He said that only, he said, you wouldn't wake up your dog and give him a cup of coffee, a donut, and a cigarette. So why do you do that to yourself? That's great. The, uh, Mark Schiff and I, we used to cassette tape uh, Jack Lane show. He had a little radio show or something. And we'd say, oh, I got a great one for you. And he, he was into it like I'm into it. And, uh, you know, yeah. So that's how I got in. Yeah. More and more, I understood like, oh, it's just like everybody else. First you go, oh, it's don't eat meat, uh, don't eat, uh, you know, white meat, don't eat eggs. You know, it just moved along with me. It wasn't like an all at once kind of thing, you know, I, which probably was better for me in, in a way. I think Linda has a question. Yeah, okay. So um, someone wants to know how much water you started out Six with. cups. So I have, I had the, the recipe. I put the recipe in half. And then... Someone wants to know, can chili be a breakfast on the 21 day weight loss? Program? Well, it can be a second breakfast. So yes, it can basically be your breakfast, but eat some vegetables, at least a little bit by themselves first, but why not? I mean, this is mostly vegetables and soup is probably one of the most favorable things you can eat for weight loss because it's full of water. It's full of fiber. It's funny because I was just uh, listening to one of the lectures I had done with Barbara Rolls many years ago, and she talked about how water is important when it's attached to the food. So you can't just think like, oh, I'm going to eat a lot of dried fruit, but drink a lot of water <laughs> and hopefully magically restore the calorie density. It has to be bound to the food for you to not only lower the caloric density of the food, but for you to get that, that feeling of fullness because hunger and thirst are different mechanisms. Water satisfies the thirst drive not really the hunger drive. So soup is like a win-win. I mean, the more soup you eat, I mean, we're talking about broth-based soups, water-based soups, not, not like Manhattan clam chowder or New England, whichever the one is with all the cream. All right, so yeah. we got one, one minute. minute on the pressure Dr cooker. And we're really gonna use our little diverter to release the pressure and then we're gonna zhuzh it and then we're gonna put it in a bowl. You is know, is there anything in, in the- gonna taste it. Is there anything that- you go, oh, I wish I had one of those. Usually you're showing people you and tools? they're thinking, yeah. And they're thinking, oh my God, I wish I had one of those. I well, need you know, one of those. You know, yesterday at Shana's house, I thought, boy, I really need a Breville sous chef food processor because I'm using my nut milk because of food processor, which that's not that's really what, what it was intended for. Yeah. And I don't yeah. want it to like burn out because it's really great for what it does, making plant milks and nut butters. So I kind of had some food processor envy yesterday. That sound is my stomach talking. Yeah, so that's our, that means it's ready. I did eight minutes and now I'm going to release the pressure. Yeah. Oh, and it smells so good. Looks like an old style cartoon character with yeah, the like steam coming out of the ears. Out of the ears. Huh? Yeah. Look at that. I remember I watched you uh, on a tape, uh, I think it was Hawaii. You spoke in Hawaii and you put your face right oh, up. Oh, yeah. And I say, here's a, here's a facial. For a facial. Look at, this. Look at this. I'm having a very high antioxidant facial. The thing is, yeah. when you live in the desert, it's always like this. So yeah. you don't really need to use your instant pot. The longer it takes for the pressure to release means the longer that it, uh, you know, um, the, the fuller the unit. And if you wanted this to go faster, and not that it even really took that long, start with boiling water. That will make it go faster. 
Um, someone wants to ask if they explain the weight loss program. Okay, so everybody's going to be different as to how much weight they have to lose. And if you have a lot of weight to lose, you get to eat more calories and still lose weight. Realize that anything is better than processed sugar, in my opinion. And processed sugar is 1,800 calories a pound. Dates are still fairly calorically dense at 1,300 calories a pound. But the nice thing about them is most people don't overeat dates the same way they overeat sugar. Because being a whole food, they have fiber and water, which is intact. They have vitamins, minerals, phytochemicals, antioxidants, and micronutrients. But I don't recommend snacking on dried food if you're trying to lose weight. It's different, like if you're traveling, sometimes that's the best calories you can get. But I do recommend using dates instead of sugar. Would you mind? Can you hand me that book? I have an ebook. Um, this one? Yeah. And I, it's called it, This is not, This I printed it out, but I have an ebook, a date with dessert, where I just show you how to make recipes just using dates, date syrup, and date paste so that you don't have to use white sugar. Oh, you know what I made today, Steve? What um, we, we oh my this. God. Uh, we're going to have these for dessert. Oh my so God. These are my cinnamon buns that are good for your buns. I used my last of my local spicery. These are so delicious. And I'm sure this recipe is on YouTube Beautiful. and it's in the ebook, but we're going to have these for dessert. Oh, and oh, these are not made with dates, actually. So they're a little bit lower in caloric density. What are they made with? Well, they're made with uh, bananas. Uh, I love bananas. Yeah. There is one teaspoon per cupcake in the frosting of date syrup, but they are not made with dates. So now, yeah. pretty soon, I'm going to be able to open this top. I'm pretty sure just the last bit of steam is coming out. There we go. And these are very safe. It won't open until the pressure really is truly released. Almost. Come on. Yes, a little bit still coming out, though. A little bit. Okay, there we go. Oh, Ooh, my look God. All right. Look at so that. Now, what we're going to do. I do almost all of my recipes like this, whether it's cauliflower bisque or smoky butternut bisque. I don't have time to be cutting things up. And so I just use but you know what? I probably should have cut that big onion up because I'm not sure it cooked all the way. So let me use a knife to uh you need me to hold it? Let's see. I'll hold it with that, the fork. that was probably a mistake to oh no, it's soft. It's just it's just very, very big. So I'm gonna yeah. have to cut this onion up Here, a little you bit. Want this? To get it to uh, to blend because that was probably a mistake because I, I lowered it from 10 minutes to eight minutes. How do I do this? I'll hold it. There we go. It is pretty soft, but it could have gone another two minutes. This would have been a case for cutting it in half. Whoop, put it back in. Right. You know what they say, it's not what you can make, it's what you can fix. <laughs> Boom. And that was enough, huh? I think it's going to work. I had to cut it a little bit smaller. Let's hope that this helps. All right. That was an exceedingly big red onion. You know, if you follow Dr. Furman's G-bombs, I mean, this has a lot of the G-bombs in it. It's got the greens, it's got the beans, it's got the onions, it's got the mushrooms. I mean, it doesn't have the seeds or the berries, but it's got at least quite a few of the daily dozen. And you know, the thing is, is if I needed more time just to get that onion more cooked, I just have to put it back on under pressure for like two more minutes, it'd be fine. But you can see it made short order of the sweet potato. Okay. So again, I don't have to puree it to completely smooth. It's really, really up to you. And I don't want to waste your time having to watch me do this. This makes a lot of soup to be able to share this with you. And you know, it's amazing. This is a half a recipe. Can you imagine what the full recipe would make? Oh my God, you have enough for a so month. Good. But this is, Shada said this is her favorite soup and this is what she uh, ate when she was losing weight. And she still loves it today. I love it. Okay. Absolutely love it. Takes a while to blend it all. You could blend this in a blender too, but you have to be very careful. Because heat will expand in the blender. I just want to get you guys out by five o'clock in case anybody wants to watch the Oscars. I only saw, we saw two movies. We saw Respect and we saw West Side Story. I think that's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that was it, the ones we saw. But it's still usually a fun show. Uh, uh, this is uh, exhausting. This is like my, my, my fourth uh, 
demo don't, today. Don't look up. Don't look up. Oh, yeah. So. We saw Don't Look Up. That was, yeah, I, you that know, was great. That was really quite awesome. Really high fun. So you can see that it's, it is taking care of the onion. I cut it up smaller. Oh, when you're using an immersion blender, keep it down on the bottom, touching the bottom. It has a recessed blade. If you lift it up while you're blending, you could get quite a nasty burn. Yeah. This is very, very thick soup. And just too short is the problem. Where the pressure cooker from this counter is too high. But this does have quite a wonderful flavor. Uh, this is an excellent serve over any kind of rice. Or and even, we made rice. Even over a year. Can you take care of this for a minute? Do you know how yeah. it is? I'm so tired, guys. I've been doing this since nine o'clock this morning for all these different organizations. For every, 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 you, you're screaming. You can't. Oh, you yeah. can't I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, if, you, if you want yeah. to pick it up, you got to stop got it. Got it. Pick it up and pick it up. Sorry about that. Yep. Any questions, guys, before we close? Call for the recipe tomorrow. Sign up for my emails at chefha.com. We've been sending it out in advance, but we're making and I know we're making chocolate. Banana. Oh, we're making fudge truffles. We're making date paste, peanut butter fudge oh, truffles. And the noodles, you said. We're making spicy peanut noodles. I don't know why I think there's one of the people hiking, but we'll find out tomorrow. What, so yeah. all right, we'll, we'll, we'll finish this up later. So is what we're going to do? Is that a Thai restaurant? Thai recipe with spicy? It's kind of Thai. Right, so let, let me serve you. It, we'll, we'll finish it up a little later, but we're just going to put a scoop in here. Steve can try it. Oh, we're going to top it with a little bit of the pico de gallo salsa. So pretty. And because he has the pico de gallo, he doesn't necessarily need a squeeze of lime, but. It's always fun to serve it with, to a guest with a squeeze of lime and let them oh squeeze God. it over. And then you can tell uh, the uh, people uh, uh, uh. Okay, how it here is. we go. I'm very, very He won't privileged. lie. He's not a liar. He's, no, a, he's not, a very yeah. honest person. I'm like the focus group. Make, make sure you blow so that it doesn't burn. Oh, my God. Wow. Really good. And the blend with, with the tomato is insane. Is it really good with the salsa? I'm oh, not. yeah. Really great. Wow. I won't. Even, I might not even need dinner after having this bowl. That's not true. I definitely have dinner after this bowl. So just want to get a little pretty plate and plate my uh, apple pie squares. Yes. Someone wants to know if they can bake or dehydrate the apple pie squares. Ah, oh, OK. I, I Dehydrate wow. for sure. You know, if you bake them, I wouldn't bake them very long. They're very dense, and I think they could burn very quickly. I mean, if you were going to bake them, what I would do is maybe 350 for like two or three minutes. I mean, because these are small. I mean, it would have to be a pretty quick bake, wow. you know. But, yeah, I mean, if you want, I could even try it with these. You know, we have left. We're going to have leftovers for sure. But this is a cute little little snack. This is so good. It is good, and it's a it's an old favorite. Wow. So, and again, soup as a first course is one of the best ways to lower the overall caloric density of your meal. Soup as a first course or a main course. So there we have it. Another four recipes from Unprocessed. So thanks very much for your support of my work and the book. I really appreciate go. it. Go. And go. I hope you'll try these recipes. And if you try oh them, I sure hope you'll like them. And I sure hope you'll come back tomorrow at five for day seven of my free dinner with Chef DJ series. And we're going to be doing a lot of peanut butter and recipes. Th thank you for having me in these couple of days. And keep talking to them. I'm like, oh, yeah. Yeah, thank you. It was fun. Everybody, hi. And uh, have any questions for me? Maybe I can answer them afterwards in the show notes below in comments. So if you have one or two, whatever. It was fun. Very, I'm very uh, grateful and privileged to... Uh, be the focus group the last uh, year and 10 months, Linda and I. Thanks, so uh, here's to your health. And uh, we're th thrilled to be a part of your day. And um, that's all, folks. I mean, wait, wait. I I'm waiting for AJ. I'm